Welcome to the 2020 AMS Administrators Award Ceremony. Thank you all for joining us today for AMS's first ever virtual ceremony. Today we will recognize 13 teams for significant achievements this past year. Before we begin the award presentations, AMS Administrator Bruce Summers and MRP Undersecretary Greg Eyeball will speak to us. Hello everyone, welcome to the 2020 AMS Administrators Award Ceremony. The past several years, we've varied the format for this ceremony in an effort to include as many of you as possible, feature different speakers, and most importantly, conduct a ceremony that respects the work of the AMS employees who achieved great success on behalf of the agency through hard work, creativity, and innovative problem solving. You know, typically we host a ceremony in the Jefferson Auditorium here in the USDA headquarters building, and for several years we've included a live broadcast so as many AMS employees outside of Washington, D.C. as possible can participate. This year, because of COVID-19 pandemic, we're taking the technology further and using it to bring us all together virtually. In addition to the video you're watching now, we work to build a virtual platform so that we can still feel a bit like we're all celebrating these achievements together. After the video, I hope you'll take some time to check out some of the features on the platform. As I said, we're trying something new again, and we're open to your feedback. Let us know what you liked or didn't like. One of the platform's links includes a survey where you can submit comments on this year's format, how the platform works for you, and any of the thoughts you'd like to share. You know, 2020 has been a year like no other. The pandemic has made us adjust processes and procedures, change some of the ways we communicate, and in many cases brought out the best of your entrepreneurial spirit. For many of us, the pandemic has added an urgency to the work we do, and across the agency, AMS employees have responded in great ways. This year, the Administrator Awards are recognizing more employees than ever before because the response across the agency has been immense. But before we move on to the award ceremony, I think it's important to acknowledge that the coronavirus has affected all of us in different ways whether you are continuing to work in a processing plant or another field location, or now teleworking most of the time, your daily routine has likely been altered. Your personal life has probably changed too. I know that many of you are trying to balance your work responsibilities with other priorities, including ensuring that your children have what they need to attend and succeed at school, whether they're in a physical classroom or attending online. Some members of our team at AMS also have gotten sick from the virus, but we know that not everyone recovers. Some of you may have lost friends or family members or others close to you because of COVID-19. And I'd like to offer my condolences for your loss. It's likely that the challenges presented by the pandemic will continue to affect us all for a while. There is also help available to meet some of these challenges. We've shared links to resources offered through our employee assistance program and other programs in the AMS Voice. I encourage you to take advantage of these programs and to contact your supervisors to discuss accommodations that might be available to you if needed. You know, looking back over the past year, I think we can take pride in the fact that we have been resilient and flexible in meeting the challenges of the pandemic. And in fact, I think that's the theme of 2020, resilient and flexible. We have continued to do our jobs and do them well. During this pandemic, we've remained open for business in person and remotely. Together, we, Team AMS, number about 4,000 people, and together, we have worked alongside our partners with other federal, state, local agencies, stakeholder organizations to ensure the food supply chain remains strong, the producers are supported, and Americans have continued access to safe and nutritious food. It's not possible today to recognize each of you for your many individual contributions over the past year. Nevertheless, your work has mattered and has contributed to our success in serving our customers. Whether your job means you're wearing a winter coat every day because you're grading products in coolers and freezers, or you're trying to maintain social distancing while on the job at a terminal market or at a border inspection location, cotton classing office assembling boxes of cotton standards, or participating in a virtual formal rulemaking hearing before an administrative law judge, or managing the virtual National Organic Standards Board meeting with hundreds of people from across the U.S. and beyond, we're conducting one of Dairy's program's virtual desk audits that have temporarily replaced their traditional on-site audits. Please know that I have great respect for the work you do, the work you have done, and the circumstances you continue to work under today. Our AMS mission touches much of the agriculture food supply chain, and your efforts are critical to the movement of agricultural products 
from the farm to the table here in the United States and around the world. Today you will hear about many AMS successes from the year. I hope that you're proud of your work and the work of your colleagues. I know that I am. I also hope that as we move along in today's program and recognize many colleagues for their incredible achievements, you will join me in congratulating them on their awards. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the AMS Administrators Awards virtual ceremony video. Thank you, Bruce. Next, a message from Undersecretary Eyeball. Hello, everyone. I am Undersecretary Greg Eyeball. It's my pleasure to celebrate AMS in this unique way. This isn't the way we are used to holding the award ceremony, but provides an opportunity for field employees to be able to view the awards recognition program. I want to thank each of you for your dedication and work during this very challenging time. While we are taking time to select a few individuals and teams for special recognition, I want each employee to understand that I recognize we have all worked together to support each other and ultimately how we have worked together to carry out our mission to support American agriculture. I'd like to congratulate the teams receiving AMS Administrator Awards. I'm also here today to recognize two of these teams. They each are receiving an Undersecretary's Award for their efforts which shaped and helped implement the department's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Livestock and Poultry Market News Team prepared critical analysis reports that enabled Secretary Purdue to employ policies that allowed the food supply chain to flex with the strain of increased demand for essential items like beef, shell eggs, chicken, and pork products. This team's reports showed the shifts in the supply of these products and helped us find ways to move products from the commercial food supply chain to the consumer food supply chain. These reports also helped us design the regulatory flexibilities and other tools that supported farmers, ranchers, and other producers looking for markets for their products. The data provided by this market news team was essential to the work of the second team receiving an Undersecretary's Award, the AMS Farmers to Families Food Box Program Implementation Team. Since mid-May, this team has worked diligently to oversee the purchase and delivery of millions of food boxes to well over 10,000 nonprofit recipient organizations around the country, representing millions of meals for American families in need. Ultimately, by the end of October, this team will have managed an unprecedented $4 billion in funding that supported American farmers, kept people employed, and provided nutritious and wholesome food to communities across the country. Thank you for joining me to celebrate how each of you contribute to our success in serving American agriculture. Keep up the good work, and as the Secretary always says, do right and feed everyone. Thank you, Mr. Undersecretary. Now the award presentations will begin. The first award recognizes the Market News Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Sonia Jimenez. Hello, I'm Sonia Jimenez, Deputy Administrator for Specialty Crops. I'm here to present an award for Market News. On a regular day, you would see market news reporters all over the United States collecting valuable data that traders use to make business decisions. But during the past few months, the extreme and unusual circumstances in the marketplace have led not only members of the industry to reach out, but also researchers, academics, and other government agencies. These institutions use market news data to formulate projections and data analysis, both as teaching tools and as a service to the community. The markets are evolving and changing at a rapid pace, often leaving even the most experienced buyers and sellers seeking information. The pandemic and the vast number of uncertainties resulting from it have shined a spotlight on market news, its reports and information, and the critical role that it plays every day. 
AMS Market News reporters were adapting and continuing to provide their reports without missing a beat. Instead of relying on their usual face-to-face -face interactions, many reporters use combination of phone calls, emails, video chats, you name it, but they gather the data and share it with everybody. Many risk getting exposed to the virus to gather this data. When the department developed the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, Market News data was the only U.S. government issue data that was available for identifying the agricultural commodities that have suffered price declines. This data was essential to determining which growers and commodities were eligible to participate in the program. Now more than ever, advances in technology allow Market News and our reporters to provide critical data and information to the industry at a time of their greatest need for market transparency. Kudos to all our market reporters and other staff for continuing to provide this important service. Thank you, Sonia. Congratulations to the Market News team. The next award goes to the Tomato Suspension Agreement team, presented by Deputy Administrator Mike Durando. Hi, I'm Mike Durando, Deputy Administrator for the AMS Fair Trade Practices Program. Since 2013, the United States and Mexico have lived with a negotiated agreement that suspended the anti-dumping investigation of Mexican fresh tomatoes, while ensuring that American tomato producers were able to compete on a level playing field in the domestic marketplace. With the agreement's five-year sunset taking effect in 2018, the U.S. Department of Commerce began working with its counterparts in Mexico and the U.S. tomato industry to develop a new suspension agreement that now requires a far greater number of fresh tomato shipments from Mexico to receive a USDA inspection and provide that the Perishable Agricultural Commodities Act, or PACA, can be used to uphold the terms of the agreement. The Agricultural Marketing Service provided critical support to the Commerce Department in the development and implementation of the new agreement. Specifically, the SCP Specialty Crops Inspection Division contributed expert technical guidance that informed the crafting and implementation of the new inspection requirements, while Fair Trade's PACA Division worked with Commerce on the terms of the new agreement governing the sales transactions for cross-border tomato trade. In September of 2019, the U.S. Department of Commerce and Mexican representatives signed the new tomato suspension agreement, once again sending our AMS team into action, arranging and conducting four major outreach meetings with key importers, exporters, and Mexican and U.S. government officials, educating them about the new inspection requirements. Finally, the SCI division rapidly built a new data management and reporting system for inspection personnel to provide critical data, including daily reports on inspection volumes and outcomes. Please join me in congratulating our awardees. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations to the Tomato Suspension Agreement Team. The next award goes to two teams, the Farmers to Families Food Box Program Implementation Team and the Farmers to Families Food Box Program Support Team presented by Deputy Administrator Dave Tuckwiller. Hello, I'm Dave Tuckwiller from the Commodity Procurement Program, and I have the privilege to recognize two teams for the Farmers to Families Food Box Program. As the COVID-19 outbreak spread earlier this year, we began to hear reports that the closure of schools, restaurants, and other food service establishments was creating an excess of domestic fresh produce on the market. At the same time, food banks and other nonprofit organizations were seeing huge increases in participation. Members of the Farmers to Families Food Box Implementation Team developed a concept paper outlining a procurement process that was completely different than anything we had ever attempted before. The concept was to link farmers, produce distributors, and food banks, providing flexibility for them to move the produce that wasn't being sold. The concept of matching up available products through distributors to food banks and needy people was well received, not only by the department, but also by the White House. And what began as a $100 million attempt to support the fresh produce industry quickly turned into the $3 billion Farmers to Families Food Box Program to support the fresh produce, 
dairy, chicken, and pork industries while feeding people across the country. Uh, the concept paper was developed on April 6th and sent to the department. On May 8th, we had already received 550 proposals. We had reviewed those proposals. 198 contracts were awarded for $1.2 billion worth of products to be delivered in May and June. This took a huge effort to pull off. And the first team I'd like to recognize is the Farmers to Families Food Box Implementation Team for the development and implementation of the Farmers to Families Food Box Program. But developing and implementing the program in record time was just the first step and it has taken an army of people to manage and support the program since it was implemented. Livestock, poultry, dairy, and specialty crops developed and implemented audit plans to ensure food safety, domestic origin, and that our contractual requirements were met. We had an increase in our IT help desk calls by 45%, and we had a whole team of people that were involved in answering uh, questions from vendors that had never participated in our programs before. Freedom of Information Act inquiries increased by 245% over what we're used to. Media inquiries, uh, we were getting four or five a year before, we were getting four or five a day during this program. Congressional inquiries were coming in at least one per day. Uh, the program is so big that our invoice approvals went from an average of 10,000 invoices per month to 50,000 a month. All of that was on top of our normal work, our regular purchase programs that continued. And so some others had to pick up additional work while some of our staff were working on the Farmers to Families Food Box program. These activities while supporting the contracting and implementation team were critical to the success of the Farmers to Families program. And this is the second team we are recognizing today. The efforts of these two teams while a monumental task created a program that will be talked about for years and had a very direct and positive impact to the American people. Thank you, Dave. Congratulations to the Farmers to Families Food Box Program implementation and support teams. The next award goes to the Corpus Christi Cotton Classing Office Acquisition Team presented by Deputy Administrator Daryl Ernest. Hello everybody, I'm Daryl Ernest, Deputy Administrator for the AMS Cotton and Tobacco Program. It is my pleasure to introduce the Administrator Award for the acquisition of the Cotton and Tobacco Program's Corpus Christi, Texas Cotton Classing Facility and especially the outstanding team that brought it to fruition. We have 10 cotton classification or grading facilities nationwide used to grade all cotton produced in the U.S. each year. Until December of 2019, all of these were leased from private owners. Beginning in 2018, our program worked on an analysis to determine if it would be more advantageous to own our facilities rather than lease them, due in large part to the complexity of our lab, testing operations, and duration of time that we usually stay in a facility before vacate. Because most of our owners are not affiliated with agriculture or cotton, getting the necessary maintenance and attention for complex systems and equipment has also been very difficult. So the team crunched the numbers, weighed the pros and cons, and found that it made more sense in the long run for us to own our facilities where feasible. The team then embarked on the arduous and unchartered journey of acquiring the Corpus Christi office. From negotiations with the owners to feasibility analyses to endless lists of paperwork and approvals, our team powered through the process with relentless determination. They cleared all regulatory and legal hurdles, navigated the purchasing process, and after over a year, the journey culminated in December 2019 with ownership of the facility. This acquisition was the first of its kind in AMS and for our program and will pave the way for us to make similar transactions in the future. We look forward to the future in our cotton classing facility in Corpus as it evolves into a more efficient operation for our customers and employees. I want to personally thank the team members who worked very hard and persevered through many obstacles and challenges to get this project accomplished. And despite the setbacks and delays, they never took their eyes off the prize. I really appreciate their effort and commitment. It is truly a tribute to what AMS, its programs, and especially its employees can do when driven by purpose and customer focus. For all of AMS, please stay safe, take care of yourselves, provide inspiration and support wherever you can, and hang in there as we carry on our very essential services. Thank you. Thank you, Darrell. Congratulations to the Corpus Christi Cotton Classing Office Acquisition Team. The next award goes to the Collaboration for Safety and Service Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Arthur Neal. 
Good day, y'all. My name is Arthur Neal. I'm the Deputy Administrator for the Federal Grain Inspection Service. And today, we want to acknowledge AMS employees that fueled our collaboration for safety and service. When COVID-19 occurred back in March, when it really hit us, it introduced a lot of uncertainties and challenges to the agency, to the agricultural food supply, and to all of our employees, including putting restraints on the availability of personal protective equipment to keep our graders and auditors safe as we fulfill the mission to help facilitate the marketing of agricultural food throughout this country. With these challenges, cotton and tobacco initially began to search through its inventory and find PPE that it had, and they distributed it to all of the user fee programs. At the same time, we had AMS employees in livestock and poultry use creative ways to research and manufacture 3D rubber masks that employees could wear to keep them safe. That was replicated at the National Grain Center in Kansas City by the FGI staff. FGI staff also created and manufactured a safe formula for hand sanitizer and 3,200 bottles were distributed across the country. What we learned about our employees is that we're one body with many parts. And so when push comes to shove, we're always ready to support each other. So we want to say thank you on behalf of management for a job well done. Thank you, Arthur. Congratulations to the Collaboration for Safety and Service team. The next award goes to the Uninterrupted Grading and Auditing Service Delivery Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Dana Cole. Hello, I am Dana Cole, Deputy Administrator with Dairy Programs, and I am delighted to be here today to present the AMS Administrator's Award to the AMS Grading and Auditing Team. AMS grades, audits, certifies, and inspects approximately $200 billion worth of agricultural products, ensuring the quality of domestic goods and helping American farmers and businesses export goods to over 100 different countries. On March 11, 2020, COVID-19 was declared a national emergency, resulting in a declaration by the Department of Homeland Security designating agricultural food production as part of the nation's critical infrastructure. This declaration solidified what we in AMS already knew and meant that AMS employees would play a critical role in continuing to minimize food supply disruptions. As expected, our dedicated frontline grading, inspection and auditing teams immediately shifted gears and leapt into action with new and innovative ideas to ensure we continued meeting our standards of service delivery to American agriculture. Together, the AMS grading and auditing team has overcome a myriad of challenges to keep frontline personnel healthy and productive, ensure uninterrupted service delivery so American agriculture in, in turn put food on the plates of all Americans. Congratulations to all our grading and auditing employees for your quick and decisive actions to ensure the uninterrupted delivery of essential grading and auditing services during a time of extraordinary uncertainty for American agriculture brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Congratulations to the Uninterrupted Grading and Auditing Service Delivery Team. The next award goes to the FOIA Office Restructuring Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Jenny Tucker. Hello, Team AMS. I am so pleased today to present the award for the FOIA Office Improvement Project. This team won this award for restructuring the Freedom of Information Act office to build a team of civil servants. The office also implemented critical process improvements to enhance the consistency, timeliness, and accuracy of FOIA responses. I'd like to tell you more about this team and its impact. Freedom of information is a core value for our nation. 
that values captured in an act called FOIA, as a matter of fact. FOIA requesters can ask for anything, records far and wide. Show me all your notes and letters. It can lead to quite a ride. Once the records are gathered carefully, piece by piece, redactions are then applied to protect what we release. We used to struggle with FOIA tasks, delays, inconsistencies, lost files, and more. Our responses, we are honest, were sometimes quite poor. This led to angry customers and we even got sued. It was time to take another look, process improvements, and sued. We started with the people to build a federal team. Hiring is hard, but that effort picked up steam. We finally got lucky and hired Mark Brook. He built a stellar team from there and they do things by the book. They developed formal processes, tracking and clear rules. They also built relationships and implemented new tools. FOIA costs are down, the releases are transparent. Customer service is excellent. The impact is apparent. Today we celebrate a top-notch team. They sure don't fool around. Efficiencies, timeliness, and all-around smarts. FOIA successes we have found. My congratulations to the FOIA Office Improvement Project team. Thank you for all you do to support the agency's mission and core values. Thank you, Jenny. Congratulations to the FOIA Office Restructuring Team. The next award goes to the Domestic Hemp Program Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Sonia Jimenez. I'm Sonia Jimenez, Deputy Administrator for Specialty Crops. I'm here to present an award for the hemp team. The 2018 Farm Bill legalized full-scale hemp production in the United States for the first time in nearly a century. In a short amount of time, a team within AMS developed a national regulatory framework for hemp production, testing, licensing, and compliance. To promote public awareness and input during the regulatory drafting stage, the team conducted several webinars, the first of which included over 4,000 participants. They also engaged with Native American tribal representatives on multiple occasions, met repeatedly with federal law enforcement partner agencies and state governments, and responded to questions from global companies interested in U.S. hemp production. The team also coordinated extensively with sister AMS programs, USDA agencies, and other government agencies such as the Office of National Drug Control Policy, Small Business Administration, Customs and Border Services, and many, many others. And let me not leave out the many meetings with congressional staffs. The team also developed guidance documents for sampling and testing and worked closely with DEA to allow for additional disposal methods and the use of additional laboratories for testing. Since publication of the inner final rule, the hemp team has held highly interactive and technical meetings with nearly every state and US territory and over 50 different Indian tribes to assist with the development of hemp production programs. They have worked together with DEA and FSA to develop a system to share information with law enforcement and worked with NAS and the University of Kentucky to develop surveys to gather data. All of this within a very short period of time. Please join me in congratulating the HEM team. Thank you, Sonia. Congratulations to the Domestic Hemp Program team. The next award goes to the Livestock and Poultry Program Critical Daily Analysis Team presented by Deputy Administrator Jen Porter. Hi, my name is Jennifer Porter. I'm the Deputy Administrator for AMS's Livestock and Poultry Program. And I'm very honored today to present the winners of the Administrator's Award for Critical Daily Analysis, comprising folks from the Livestock, Poultry, and Grain Market News Division and the Agricultural Analytics Division. Early in March, when we began to see disruption due to the pandemic for the livestock markets that we cover, our folks quickly understood that that information was going to be quite valuable to decision makers here at USDA. Of their own volition, they started a daily market report, a daily analysis that covered a wide variety of commodities to help paint a picture for what was going on out in the countryside so that folks 
here the Department of Agriculture had the best available information at their fingertips to make decisions. These analyses were extremely comprehensive and covered a range of variables at any given time. So we worked cooperatively with FSIS, NAS, and members of the Chief Data Office to build uh, a dashboard. And we did so in very short term. That uh, dashboard, the daily work, meant many extra hours from our folks on top of the market reporting duties they were already carrying out. And all of that material they developed was extremely valuable. As folks here at the department tried to make the best decisions to help guide U.S. agriculture through um, what was arguably the most challenging time many of us have, uh, have faced. To the folks that put in all that time, all that extra effort, I, on behalf of everyone here, extend my sincere appreciation and congratulations for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Congratulations to the Livestock and Poultry Program Critical Daily Analysis Team. The next award goes to the Veterans Working Group, presented by Director of Civil Rights, Cliff Gilchrist. Greetings to each of you. I'm Clifton Gilchrist, AMS Civil Rights Director for the Affirmative Employment Program Division. I'm honored to recognize the Veterans Working Group. The AMS Veterans Working Group has promoted and successfully engaged in recruitment of military veterans in order to create and maintain a high-performing workforce in the agency and the department. In the fall, the AMS Veterans Working Group promoted the 60 Days of Veterans to showcase AMS's veterans to the agency and their contributions in the past as a service member and in the present as an AMS team member. The AMS Veterans Working Group has also worked with other agencies within the department to share lessons learned and best practices. These have included tutorials on military-based career fairs, the sharing of veterans' resumes, and the assistance on acquiring skill bridge and Operation Warfighter interns. The AMS Veterans Working Group has had tremendous success over the past couple of years and is recognized by the department as a leader within the USDA for veteran recruitment and veterans matters. Through the use of the non-competitive hiring authority, Skill Bridge, and Operation Warfighter internships, the group's efforts have saved thousands of dollars in salary costs and led to a record number of veterans employed and retained by MS while laying the groundwork for continued success in the future for the agency and the department. To establish partnerships with two major military bases and using two military internship programs the veterans recruitment increased from 3% to 21% in one fiscal year. Congratulations to this group and thanks to each of you for your efforts. Thank you, Cliff. Congratulations to the Veterans Working Group. The next award goes to the Talent Acquisition Initiative Team presented by Deputy Administrator Rei Hong Go. I am Rei Hong Guo the Deputy Administrator for the Science and Technology Program. I'm presenting the award for the Talent Acquisition Initiative Team. The AMS Talent Acquisition Initiative Team, launched in fiscal year 2019, included representatives from the Administrator's Office, 10 program areas, and the Marketing and the Regulatory Program Business Services Human Resources Division with the goal of addressing a priority list of over 500 positions. At the beginning of fiscal year 2019, AMS faced a critical staffing shortage. For this reason, the team's strategic plan, building a high-performing agency for tomorrow, outlined a three-pronged approach to address these shortages. The hiring search team worked closely with the Human Resources Division to secure and enter into a contractual agreement with the Office of Personnel Management for search hiring efforts to fill 150 plus priority positions. The long-term hiring team researched best practices internal and external to USDA and developed a long-term AMS talent acquisition roadmap. 
During fiscal year 2019-2020, the team has been able to complete a historic level of successful recruitments and onboard over 400 new employees. Please join me in congratulating the team. Thank you, Ray Hong. Congratulations to the Talent Acquisition Initiative team. The next award goes to the Website Redesign Team, presented by Deputy Administrator Tricia Kovacs. Hello, my name is Tricia Kovacs and I'm the proud Deputy Administrator working with the hardworking team in the Transportation and Marketing Program here at AMS. I'm here today to congratulate the team winning an AMS award for their work on the Website Refresh Project. The AMS website is a primary resource for our customers. They visit to find grant opportunities, market news data, how to contact AMS specialists, and also to file for a PACA license, request grading services, or search for their local farmer's market. The AMS website has 10,587 pages and 57,000 plus files. Over the last year, AMS has successfully completed three concurrent web initiatives, an update to the latest version of our web platform from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, made changes to comply with the department's web modernization project as directed by the 21st Century Integrated Digital Experience Act and refresh the layout, color scheme, and overall look and feel of our sites to adhere to the department's new branding. These web modernization efforts drive USDA's mission of serving customers efficiently, effectively, and with integrity. The redesign aimed to improve content quality and discovery, keep USDA sites visually co coherent, and ensure compliance with multiple mandates for website development. The refreshed, modernized AMS website was launched in May 2020. It had been six years since the last website refresh. AMS employees from each program contributed to this project by completing page audits, removing outdated content, and testing new pages as the site was built to ensure that all content was successfully transferred. It was truly an AMS-wide team effort. Remember I said the site has 10,587 pages and 57,000 plus files? As part of this refresh, all of those were transferred to the new operating platform and into the new site format. Website traffic is increasing. From January to April of this year, we had 131,000 visitors to our homepage. And from May to August, since the refresh, we had over 418,000 unique visitors. Between last year and this year, visits to our homepage increased by 90%. The new site has received great feedback from both internal and external customers. Congratulations to the team receiving this award and to all of you in AMS who helped make this project work. Thank you. Thank you, Tricia. Congratulations to the website redesign team. Now, Associate Administrator Aaron Morris will close today's ceremony. Wow, you all have done some incredible work this year. These awards show your commitment, creativity, resilience, and flexibility. It is likely that some of the challenges presented by COVID-19 will continue, but I'm confident that we will find ways to do our work and serve our customers and the public. One way we'll be able to stay connected is by using the new AMS intranet. I'm so happy that we'll have this new tool, which you have named AMS Insight. We are launching version 1.0 of AMS Insight. You can view a welcome video through one of the links featured on the platform we are using for the ceremony today. I encourage you to bookmark the link to the internet and regularly check it for updates. We designed AMS Insight based on your request for a one-stop resource for onboarding information for new employees, as well as links for the web t &A payroll system, the Concur travel system, insurance information, and more. As time goes by, we hope our internet will give us a way to share important information with you instead of sending emails. So please, take a look at the new AMS Insight and tell us what you think. You can send comments and ideas to amsinsight at usda.gov. We look forward to launching new features and resources based on your feedback. As I wrap up today's award ceremony on behalf of Bruce, the program deputy administrators, other members of the AMS leadership team, and myself, I'd like to thank you for all your work this past year. We look forward to the coming fiscal year and all that we will achieve together. I hope you enjoyed this virtual 2020 AMS Administrator Awards video and other sections of this platform. As Bruce said at the beginning, our intention was to bring us all together virtually. We'd love to hear what you thought of the video and I encourage you to take a few minutes to respond to the survey on this platform. 
Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Erin. Congratulations to the awardees. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 AMS Administrators Awards Ceremony.